Have you ever wondered who helped shape the growth of Las Vegas, Nevada? Have you ever thought about how the booming city became what it is now? Morris Daylitz, or better known, Mo Daylitz, helped shape Las Vegas. In 1943, Daylitz enlisted in the Army and served as an officer and was in charge of laundry facilities in New York, skills that he got from running his family's laundry business earlier in his life. Daylitz then moved to Las Vegas in 1949, and there he proved he was a leader. All through his life, Daylitz contributed so much. For example, he ran the Stardust Hotel and Casino, the Desert Inn Resort, he helped start UNLV or the University of Nevada Las Vegas, and helped pay for the college's football field, donated a lot of money to charities, built the Las Vegas Country Club, the Boulevard Mall, and residential communities, Las Vegas Convention Center, and set up a $1 million loan for the Teamsters Fund to build the Sunrise Hospital. Suzanne Daylitz, his daughter, believes that Daylitz's real estate and resort development were his most memorable contributions. In 1983, Mo Daylitz told the Las Vegas Sun newspaper that he considered the construction of the Las Vegas Convention Center to be his greatest accomplishment. According to the Sun, Mo Daylitz said, Las Vegas used to be just a gambling town. Now we are a resort destination. The Convention Center complements our purpose. Through his life, Mo Daylitz showed many leadership skills. When he was a young man, some would say that he didn't use those leadership skills in a positive way. He was involved with some illegal activity with alcohol during the Prohibition. I don't know if this is the kind of leadership that would be encouraged, but he was one of the great bootleggers of his time, said his daughter, Susan Daylitz. On December 20th, 1979, the city of Las Vegas gave Mo Daylitz the key of the city because of his contributions to building the city. When Daylitz passed away, the key went to his daughter and she later donated it to the Mom Museum. Although Daylitz was such an unforgettable man, there was a less positive side to him. When he was younger and wasn't living in Las Vegas yet, he was connected to the mob. Even though he was never charged with a crime, some people would say that he did commit some crimes. I strongly believed he moved out to Las Vegas to start his life over, and that is what he seemed to do. When he moved out to Las Vegas, he was no longer connected to the mob ties. He is an example of how Las Vegas welcomes people with all kinds of backgrounds and offers them an opportunity and a chance to start over, said his daughter. When he was in Las Vegas, he testified for the Kefauver hearings. He let everyone know that he was connected to the mob. By being involved in these hearings, he came out about being in connected to the mob. Daylitz helped form this magnificent city of Las Vegas through owning and operating successful casinos and resorts. 
Many people can agree that he helped build the city by other things, too. One of the things that Mordialitz did was he brought in many millions of dollars uh, from various sources, but particularly from uh, labor unions to invest in Las Vegas. So, uh, of course, extraordinarily successful in, uh, in terms of developing casinos, but he also built things um, and uh, brought money in to invest in projects like the Boulevard Mall in Maryland and the Sunrise Hospital on, um, on Maryland as well, near uh, Desert Inn. And uh, he also uh, built things like the Las Vegas Country Club. You know, he was really, really important, not only, as I say, to the casinos, but to the sort of basic things that we really need in a town like this. He did things that were not uh, casinos. For example, the Boulevard Mall. Again, that did take uh, union money, Teamster Pension Fund money, and they helped build the, um, the uh, Boulevard Mall, which was very, very popular at the time. That was uh, in the 60s when the town was just growing really quickly. Um, he helped build uh, Sunrise Hospital and they became like the place to have a baby, you know, so that was really good for this town. Um, he helped uh, establish with three other folks, he helped establish the Las Vegas Country Club. So there was a nice place where um, uh, people could play golf. And then um, he also did help to found what became the Las Vegas Convention and Visitors Authority, which is if you've ever seen the advertisements that say, you know, what happens here, what happens in Las Vegas stays in Las Vegas. That's the LVCVA. So he founded that as a way to uh, promote tourism in Las Vegas. So, you know, you wouldn't do that if you didn't love Las Vegas. Um, and he also founded the Convention Center um, and the Nevada Resort Association. So the Nevada Resort Association is the, the trade or industrial um, uh, lobby that represents the casinos with the state and even with the federal government. And it's really, really powerful and it's important. So, you know, he contributed in many, many ways. He's also in charge of uh, Jewish uh, philanthropic uh, charity efforts, and that was like really important to this town as well. So, um, there's another way that he contributed a lot to this town that I think is really important for many, many people, and that is that um, in, the, in the 50s and in the early 60s, well, all through the history of Las Vegas until the mid-60s, like 64, um, it was a segregated city. Uh, that is that African American people could work in the casinos, they could be entertainers, but they couldn't eat in the restaurants or stay in the hotels. So that wasn't fair, um, and it was a terrible, you know, it was a, it was a disgrace for our city. And uh, Mo Dalis and some of his friends successfully lobbied to change that. And was one of, you know, it wasn't, I don't think he, he, he was not holding a flag and uh, protesting about it, but he helped move that forward in a more progressive way. So it's really important. Um, I also think too that you know his leadership skills were demonstrated with his family. I mean, his family were upstanding citizens. So um, and Mo Dalex was you know someone involved not just in charity but in politics and in and, um, and building a city that I think a lot of people can be very proud of. Also. Mo Dalitz was admired even in his final years. According to the Las Vegas Sun newspaper, he established a $1 million trust fund with United Way to be distributed after his death. Half the sum will go to United Fund charities, while the other half will be directed to non-United Fund charities and religious groups. Sadly, on August 31st, 1989, Mo Davids passed away due to congestive heart disease, chronic hypertension, and kidney failure. Through all these accomplishments, we can see that Mo Davids was a leader and left a legacy in Las Vegas, Nevada, for all people around the world to enjoy. It's the same.